used our stack to remember all the symbols until we got to the middle. And I already used the stack for this thing. Well, I could use another stack and keep one stack to store this stuff and one stack to store my guess up until the middle, but that's two stacks. So this way really doesn't work. And it doesn't work in such a fundamental way that when you're working on this puzzle and you're first learning about theory, your gut instinct is that there's just no way to do this because it, it, it just really feels like you're stuck. It feels like there's no way you can even squeeze out anything to help you. Anything you do seems to need two stacks. Doesn't it seem that way? I mean, how are you going to show that anything from here to here is the same as something from the middle to here without two guesses and two uh, checks on those guesses? It's really tricky. It's really a neat solution. It's, it's really hard to think of. What we want to do is make these two kind of checks that we're doing, you know, checking that this is equal to this and checking that this is equal to this. The reason it seems hard is because we have two equal numbers that we're trying to check that they're equal. The half to the second half and this first part to this first part. And we can't do that with one stack. You count one thing, you can check one thing. But you can't count two different things unless you're finished counting one when you're ready to start counting the other. But these are not nested, right? So that won't work. I mean, you can count one thing and then count something else, but that's not what's happening here. So can we make these two counting things that we have to check down to one? That's the trick. Can we interleave our, our counting, like every other thing that we push on the stack? One, use a counting alphabet to count one of them, and then a separate counting alphabet to count the other one, and interleave the symbols? So I don't think so, because, because then when you're popping them off, what if you see something that doesn't apply to your count? You take it off, and then you find the one that does apply to your count. You take that off. Then you've got to put that other one back on. right? How do you get it back on? I guess you could remember that you saw it. Where are you going to remember it? Yeah. You can remember it in a finite state. But you're limited in those finite states to a finite number. If you had another stack to put it in, you could do that. But that's where you get stuck. Good idea, but you get stuck. Joe, do you have an idea? Could you put more than one thing on a stack, or in a, in a stack space? Sure. So then you could just put your first string in the first item of the stack space. Oh, oh, I see. More than one thing in a particular symbol. No, every stack, stack thing is one symbol. Right. And even if you could, you could do any finite number in one space, but you can't make a general thing go in one space. That's not allowed. All right. Uh, here's the best way for me to motivate this. Where's my big eraser? About halfway. Oh, a little less. Check this out. That's good, right? Here's the first symbol in the string. This is meant to be halfway. This is the first symbol in the second half of the string. Everyone agree? If I move over one, then here's the second symbol in the first half. Here's the second symbol in the second half. What's true about these two symbols that I want to find the mismatch in? They're separated by half the total length. Right. They're separated by half the total length. Now, as simple as that is to see when I stick an eraser up on the board, or maybe not so simple. I didn't notice this for a few hours when I did this problem. That's the only thing you really have to check, is that these two things are separated by half the length of the total string. Now, that's something that only requires a single counting. All you really want to do is make sure that the amount of the amount of distance here equals the amount of distance here plus here. Let's see if we can figure out a way to do that trick. Figure out a way to check that the amount of distance in between these two symbols has to be the same as the amount of distance between here and here. Now that Don has noticed this halfway idea, we can focus on that. I'll redraw the picture, and we'll think about it for a minute. Focus. 
stack arbitrary and we're all even large at the beginning. So that we have so we can do a negative. I don't like that color. We want the pink part to be equal to the blue part. And the part that we want to test on is this yellow part. Okay? And we want a unique time in the machine at which point we're going to guess this to look at this symbol, and at which point we're going to guess to mismatch at this symbol, just like we had in that machine. So these are going to be the guesses. And we want to make sure when we're all done that the number of symbols red in this pink area is equal to the number red in the blue area. So Chris had some idea that what should, the, what should we do in the blue area when we look at symbols? We want to do what? Push or pop? We should put, well, it doesn't really matter. We need to build our stack up with junk. Junk, okay. For a while, then stick a marker on it and start either counting up or down and then change direction in the pink part and then change direction again in the blue part. Change direction you mean if you were pushing you pop and if you pop you push? Right. All right, so let me let me give a a little bit of a cleaner way of doing that idea. That is the right idea. In this area until we get to this spot, we're going to non-deterministically sit and push uh, push X's on a stack while we read symbols. And at some point, guess to look at the symbol, just like we do there. So I'll say push X's. Then we look at this symbol. And after this symbol, we're going to start looking at symbols, non-deterministically deciding when to mismatch. And if we're not going to mismatch and look at the symbol, what are we going to do as we move here? We're going to pop these symbols. So this area will be called pop X's. Now the popping of the X's may or may not go all the way through the pink section. It probably won't. The halfway point here is around this spot. Okay, and the popping of the X's, sorry, the, the popping of the X's may or may not finish before or after the halfway spot. It will finish right after this pink spot. So the red spot's the, did I get it right? Not quite, almost right. Push X's, pop X's. When this stack is empty, you start to push again. Call this, this section here, push. And this is another random collection of symbols. It can be different from this. This might be three symbols and pop three symbols. This might be push four symbols. Okay, but I'll call it Y's just to show you that it's different from these X's. Then you make a guess, and then this section is pop the Y. We're hoping that this pops off the second we get to the end of the string. Let's say that happens. Let's say you push a bunch of symbols, pop a bunch of symbols, push a bunch of symbols, and pop a bunch of symbols, and you hit the end of the string the second you pop this last thing off and the stack's empty. What do you know? You know that 2X plus 2y plus 2, 2x plus 2y plus 1, 2, equals the whole string. Everyone agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Donna. When you actually put your marker, do you do a pop with that? These things, we won't do any pops or pushes. Okay. So we read 2x symbols, 2y symbols, and then these two symbols we read and didn't do anything with the stack. Here's the length of our string. The middle point is somewhere here, not necessarily in the center of this pink area, but somewhere left and right in there. We don't know exactly where it is. We're never going to find the halfway mark. We don't care about it. We only care that the distance between these two symbols is exactly equal to half the string, or equal to the blue section. Well, what is the pink section? It's x plus y. The whole thing is x plus y, x plus y, plus the two symbols. So if this pink part is x plus y, 